I remember when I first realized I couldn't gain muscle. I was doing everything all the big influencers were telling me, but it never seemed to actually make a difference. I was constantly dreaming about what it would be like to achieve that sculpted Greek body. How different everybody would treat me, how much respect I would get, how strong I would feel, and how much sheer confidence I would have in myself. Every day I didn't make progress felt like a day wasted. I was stuck like this for over three years before I finally found the solution. It felt like overnight I became stronger, more demanding of respect, and quite honestly, even more of a man. Now you may be asking, Riggs, how do I like finally stop building all this fat and actually put on muscle mass? And to that, I would say genetic hacking. Genetic hacking is something I discovered during my three years of trial and error with lifting. I've discovered the five main components that make it such an incredible technique for putting on muscle. This is gonna be the first of a five episode series. We're gonna be discussing a compound that plays a huge role in genetic hacking. This compound is myostatin. Myostatin is a protein that inhibits muscle growth. It acts as a regulator of muscle size and actually limits how much muscle you can put on with the genetics that you have. In normal terms, myostatin is a protein that inhibits muscle growth. I mean, it really wouldn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that if you want to be jacked, myostatin is enemy number one. How do you actually lower your myostatin? Well, in each video, we're going to be giving you different methods to actually lower your myostatin levels. And in each video, the methods are going to get progressively more effective. The first method is full body workouts. But rigs, don't bodybuilders do a bro sport? Yes, they do. But bodybuilders are on drugs and have great genetics. Their levels of myostatin are already significantly lower than the average person's. Full body workouts have been shown to decrease myostatin, again, the protein that inhibits your muscle growth more than any other training split. Here you have three groups of men. The LB group trained exclusively lower body. The upper body group or UB group trained exclusively upper body. And the UB and LB group trained full body. They train three times a week over eight weeks. And the goal of the study was to find out which training method lowers myostatin the most. As you can see, the full body group experienced the biggest reduction in myostatin by far. As you can see here, the results speak for themselves. The full body group built significantly more muscle mass. And surprisingly or not surprisingly, depending on where you are in your fitness journey, even lost significantly more fat. But Riggs, the studies, the studies are incredible. There could have been multiple other factors contributing to their differences. Well, they controlled the amount of protein they consumed, the amount of sleep they got, and the types of foods they ate. And as you can see proven in the graph, there's a correlation between the amount of myostatin dropped, muscle mass gains, and even fat loss. It's funny, <laughs> it actually reminds me of a story when I first read these studies I remember feeling like all the previous knowledge I had about fitness had been yoinked away from me, thrown out the window, thrown in the trash, and I wasted three years of trial and error just to discover this now. I thought about what my gains, what my physique would have looked like if I had implemented this from the beginning. I don't know, I just experienced a certain feeling, a feeling of almost guilt and regret. To say the least, the next day, I replaced my whole entire training plan, replaced it with a full body workout. And the next day, I was hitting full body, excited for the gains to come. Now, this is very valuable information, but it won't do you any good unless you actually put it to use. Here's how I did it, and I recommend you do it for fatigue management and optimal recovery. You want to put together a full body routine where you target every single muscle group twice during a single workout. This could be directly or also indirectly through compound movements. In the beginning, I started off with two full body workouts a week, and then I gradually moved up until I was at four. I want to separate the observers from the action takers. So if you really want to gain muscle and you're actually serious about this, what I want you to do right now is grab your iPhone, go to your notes app, and type new training plan at the top. I'll wait. Now that you've done that, what I want you to do is pause this video and put together your new full body training plan that targets each muscle group twice during a single workout. Resume this video once you finish. Now that you've done that, let's talk about how to manage your fatigue so that you actually make progress and gains. So what I do and what I recommend you do too 
is actually switch out one of your full body training days with a heavy strength training day. This helps me ensure that I'm actually making gains and making progress so that I know whether to tone the volume up or tone it down. I can't stress to you guys enough just how important fatigue management really is. So what I want you guys to do right now is open your phone, switch out one of your full body training days with the heavy strength training day, and then resume. Now that you've done that, you're one out of five steps closer to achieving your dream bot. Implement full body workouts and watch the gains roll in. I'll see you in the next one where we discuss a natural but extremely powerful myostatin decreasing compound.